So last week we saw the start of this image of a, of a scroll that needs to be opened, but nobody is worthy. Uh, and we heard that it was the Lion of Judah who's conquered. He is the one who's worthy. But then we turned and looked and the lion was actually a lamb who had been slain. And now we get to dive in more into the, this climactic moment when the, the lamb receives the scroll and can actually open up and start to unleash God's purposes in the world. And, and uh, the new song that begins to be sung uh, reverberating across the universe because the lamb who was slain is able to take this scroll. Let's dive in. Revelation 5, 8 through 14. When he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each held a harp and gold bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They took up a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, because you were slain, and by your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe, language, people, and nation. You made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will rule on earth. Then I looked, and I heard the sound of many angels surrounding the throne. The living creatures and the elders, they numbered in the millions, thousands upon thousands. They said in a loud voice, Worthy is the slaughtered lamb, to receive power, wealth, wisdom, and might, and honor, glory, and blessing. And I heard every creature... In heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, I heard everything everywhere. Say, blessing, honor, glory, and power belong to the one seated on the throne, to the Lamb forever and always. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. The elders fell down and worshipped. Uh, this is such a great scene. Building off of last week, we talked about just the, the, the cosmic universal worship that's happening day in and day out. And every time we... As a people enter into the worship of God, we are uh, seeing ourselves, we're entering into this grand cosmic scene. Uh, we even find our place here in this great image, the, the prayers of the saints, which are God's holy people. All of us, when, when we pray, we're supposed to see it like, a, like incense, the, the smoke of which is entering into the very throne room of God. How just in marvelous that you could just sit and reread this several times more meditatively and there's so much here to just pull out to be refreshed from uh, it's a really exciting passage um, there's no and we could take every single verse verse by verse there's a couple big observations that jumped out at me um, one there's this image that the, the song itself shifts something so climactic has happened because of the slaughtered lamb what Jesus who, who is Jesus right Jesus who who went, died for the sins of the world, was, risen, was raised to life because he was killed and raised to life. It, it even changes the song of the universe. Uh, now, this new song is that you are, he is the one who is worthy to take the scroll to open, open its seals. Last week, we talked about how the scroll was the, the full purpose and plan of God to be able to be unleashed on the world. And no one was worthy to find it until the slain lamb came to take the scroll. Uh, and so by his blood, he purchased for God persons from every tribe, every language, people, and nation. Uh, this word purchased is a really powerful, like dense theological term. Uh, it's where we get this idea of redeem. It's that word, the, my redeemer. Uh, and redeemer would be... Um, someone who comes to a slave auction and purchases that slave to set them free. Uh, so, uh, to set them free. The other image throughout scripture is from death itself uh, in a similar way where we, we might be slaves to sin. We're also dead to sin. And the one that can come and purchase us from death's grip to, to make us alive. It's this really powerful term. This, and you can see this all throughout the Old Testament. Uh, but now Jesus, the slain lamb, is the one who has paid the ultimate price to redeem people from every tribe, language, people, and nation. Uh, the other big thing here, part of this song, is that you've made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will rule on the earth. This uh, takes up a couple key moments in Scripture. One big one would be Exodus 19. And if you read through Exodus 19 there, God actually tells his people Israel that they're supposed to be a kingdom of priests. Which right away tells you that God never chose Israel for Israel's own sake. God chose Israel. If you're a whole kingdom filled with priests, the priest's job is to be a mediator. They speak to God on behalf of the people and they bring God's words to 
others. And so in both directions, they are the mediator between God and the world. But if your whole kingdom is a kingdom of priests, that means that Israel as a nation was designed to be the mediator for the rest of the world. The vision from the beginning of the Bible was always that God's people would bring in everyone. Now, they failed, actually immediately. By chapter 20, they've rejected this call to be a kingdom of priests. They say, no, Moses, we don't want to, to hear from God directly. You speak to God for us. And so they, it looks like God's plan has uh, failed from the very beginning. It's taken this long. God plays the long game. And finally, it comes back around. At the very end of the Bible, God has now finally made his people a kingdom of priests. So that means we can step into our role to be the mediators to the rest of the world. And God's vision is that everyone it's not one people group. It's not one special nation over the others. It's every nation, people, tribe, and language. And we who are a part of God's family are these priests, these mediators. The other image here that they will rule on earth, we've talked about this a couple times in Revelation, but might be uh, Psalm 2, uh, as well as Psalm 8, have, have these images of God creating his people to rule on the earth. Uh, that You could reflect on as well. Uh, let's see what else again just even just meditating on all of these images on why and how Jesus is worthy uh, so many songs have been sung about th these exact verses and maybe the last quick point that I'll, I'll point out is this this really jumps out at me blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb forever and always this is striking because throughout the Bible, God is very adamant. I'll put some references in the show notes that uh, he is the only one worthy to receive honor and glory and worship. God alone uh, is a, a banner cry for Israel. And here, uh, this Jewish movement of Christians uh, very early on realized that, yes, it is God alone. They're still monotheistic, and yet the Lamb also receives glory and honor. Uh, and so this kind of God and the Lamb really are seen as, as, as one. Uh, this is early Trinitarian theology here, where apparently the Lamb himself is not just an, some ordinary human, some secondary figure. He is God himself, who is also worthy to receive honor and glory and power. Uh, but maybe this week, focus even more on this idea of being a kingdom of priests. If you are, are part of the people of God, your role is not just for yourself. God did not choose you for your own sake. He chose you to be that mediator between God and the rest of the world.